And now, The Bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Two, one, two, three. Hit them low, hit them high, and watch our eagles fly. Fly, eagles fly, on the road to victory. Come on, America. E-A-G-L-E-S, eagles. Yes, indeed. Unbelievable. Uh, I'll say for Dan Soder's behalf, Eagles, the best 8-1 and team in football. The best team, period. <laughs> Soder says every week that he, uh, the, the, the Niners are the best 0 and whatever they are now. <laughs> Eight. Team in football, 0-9. and nine. I will, We'll go with this week. Um, Dan Soder, of course, across the country. I'm Big J. Okris, and this is The Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Series XM 95. Sitting in for Dan Soder while he's out trekking out west. This isn't even a billions week. This is a trek out west. This is Nana... Nana turned 90, uh, uh, so I understand uh, that. He's a sweetheart. He's a doll, that Danny. He's going to give you a booby a kiss in the mouth, yes? He's great. Uh, joining us uh, in studio as my co-host today, we have a whole week full of uh, fun, fun guests tonight. No exception, the hilarious Gino Bisconti joins us, everybody. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Oh. Gino. 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 Oh. Gino. I like, letting Lou, I like letting Lou get loose early. They walked across the street, dragged him out of the bar at Del Frisco's, and said, hey, who wants to tell dick jokes on the radio? It's an expensive bar, Del Frisco's. This guy. I ate Del Frisco's not long ago, downstairs, Sirius XM. Fucking expensive. Holy but, shit. Oh, one of the best steaks in the city. But fantastic food. Yeah. Awesome. We did enjoy. We had steak, right, Christine? Del Frisco's? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so good. What so else good. would you get at Del Frisco's? Sit there and, ooh, try uh, the salmon tower. No, faggot. Maybe a salmon no. tower. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> maybe a salmon pit. Black Lou, first and foremost, my kudos to you for, I know that broke your heart to have to do that, but as a producer of the show, you had to play the Eagles song. I know it's killing you, but the, the Cowboys' big win. Yeah, looked pretty good last night, huh? They did look really good, Yeah, actually, they covered. Scare- Geno's picks had them. How the fuck is Ezekiel Elliott still playing? Great lawyers. I mean, they must be amazing. They're just appealing the whole year, basically, just like Brady's team did when he uh, had but to face those four games. He you know? knows that, but when do you, you'd rather have it, like find out the season's over, then do them. I'd, I'd rather it be next year. Yeah? yeah, so we can plan for it better. But at this point, does anyone believe? And this is what get lost, gets lost, and I'll defend him because yes, he pulled the chicks top down during the Mardi Gras parade, and yes, he got into a fight with a fan who wouldn't press charges because. Ezekiel, Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Oh, is that what he did? He put a woman's... That's what the whole thing's about? No, no. It was domestic abuse. No, that that was it. But it's a preponderance of evidence that finally they're like, look, dude, just like while you're being investigated for domestic violence charges, he pulled a chick's top down. And my favorite, and you'll you'll know this, mm-hmm. he got into a fight with a guy at a bar, broke his nose. The next day, they were waiting for the guy to press charges. like, um, I'm not pressing charges on Ezekiel <laughs> Elliott. How do you not love that? He's like, I'm not getting Ezekiel. He's a cowboy. Sir. He's like, no, no. Really? I, he's like this. I fell five times into... <laughs> To a wall, yeah. and 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 that makes me. But here's it's like that's that. By the way, that guy is dumb and awesome, um, and, 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 some, and the best some Cowboys crazy ever, way. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty real thing to have an accident like that, or some. Oh, not an accident. I mean to have a problem like that with somebody. But like, I think oh, what gets man, lost, I'll, I'll eat the shit on this one, buddy. You better be out there playing. But I think what gets lost in all this because I get annoyed with it. Don't get me wrong, because I have Darren McFadden in too. Because he. <laughs> May actually be innocent in a way, because this chick is abs- and I'm not saying he did or did not do it, right. but this chick is crazy. Like, at one point, she- he was, like, banging. Who- Lucky Whitehead, the chick that, the- excuse me, the dude that, like, got arrested and thrown off the team and then played for the Jets. Lucky Whitehead then- sounds like a female porn Oh, name. yeah. <laughs> and she, like, would say, yeah, I banged Lucky Whitehead after we broke. Like, this chick is crazy, right. you know? And I-, I know a bit about crazy women, but this chick is crazy, so maybe he didn't do it. So she said she's- she-, she said she's fucked other players. Yeah- oh, yeah. So. She's like, I'm going to get-, get you suspended. I'm going to fuck your teammates. Can we see what this chick looks like? Is her picture? Oh, she's hot, yeah. Is she super hot? She's hot. Her name no. is hot. Her name she's is... one of those crazy, ugly women that a football <laughs> player will put up with, Jay. <laughs> you never know. Some of, you ever see the wives like the uh, Sally Amua ha ha has and the Vaya Tapala ha 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 Have you ever seen the, the wives of those, the Samoan guys? Look they at look, that. Look it, at looks that. Like it looks like they're waiting for themselves in the stands. <laughs> look at that. You'd be banging her while she's like, I'm going to say you beat me. Okay, just let me finish. See, you know it's funny, man? And no black woman's going to come to his defense because She's going to be like, well, you want to run off with those white bitches. See what <laughs> you get? She's just light colored, yo. See what you get? That's what's what going to happen. Am I right, Black Lou? <laughs> yes, sir. That's right with the black woman. They're going to say right there, right? Oh, hell yeah. You getting some shit with your white wife? Don't come looking for black women to come bail you out. No, she's got fault. that mocha danger flavor. She is, uh. What's the story? Ezekiel Elliott? Yeah, well, I mean, ex- extensively, the story is uh, domestic violence. She abused, she accused him of domestic abuse. 
Um, and simply because he's a cowboy, I full, wholeheartedly believe, <laughs> if you're a member of that animalistic crew, who, by the way, in the uh, 90s, Jacob, the team bought a house that was e- exclusively for hookers and cocaine. Yeah. They bought a house. These garbage animals uh, also, I believe... Uh, I believe as they just walk outside, they just go and just smack every woman they see. They're misogynists. They're animals. I won't name I names. I let the record show they won three times. <laughs> yeah. They're just running fucking coke out speed. They were not distracted. Oh, Deion Sanders with his crazy nostrils. Huffing it. You just can't say that, can you? What? I'm kidding. Deion Sanders, big nostrils for big huffing no- it? Big nostrils. Oh, you're right. I have no evidence that Deion Sanders did coke, but I mean like... You ever hear his rap music? I mean, no. that seems like something where a guy goes, he goes, dude, just write down some lyrics, man. I don't give a shit. We'll get this thing out there. We'll sell a million copies. I don't give a shit. What do you want to do? What time is it? Is it 5 a.m.? What time is the studio open? Six? Let's just stay up. You guys want to do more blow and stay up and just record an album? <laughs> um, yeah, must be the money. This isn't Coke Field right here. That is. The He's got a shirt and, co- and vest, both no collar. No. Look at that. Look at that. Be the money. Don't put this in everybody. We'll put that down in the background. But Drop we'll, that let's get nasty. the actual Ezekiel Elliott. You're not a football guy, Jacob, right? No, I if it's not white guys driving cars, you check out. How are you not a football guy, Jacob? It's America. He's this a, is what we he's, do. Uh, he's NASCAR, which is um, right. pretty America yeah. too. All right, I'll talk slower. So that's good. <laughs> I like, don't like NASCAR. Well, Ezekiel um, Elliott plays what? Oh, that girl's going to release a sex tape, it says, of her and Ezekiel Elliott? Yeah. Oh, great. That's awesome. Yeah, he'll, uh, I mean, he'll be the or one maybe in the hat shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think he, uh... Oh, what he bet on Ezekiel Elliott's piece? I bet. Pretty good wallop. <laughs> Here's the thing about Ezekiel Elliott. I don't even... Look, I, I, I'm... And I'm asking you, uh, what's, what'd you call him, colored producer? I'm not <laughs> oh! Heard. Those Jesus, pe- Gene. Those people in the booth. Look, Eugene. I'm going to say your full name whenever you say whenever you're it. Eugene. D- but here's the thing, and I love Dak Prescott. And I'm not trying to sell you on him because you're right. a cowboy. Said, I'd love. What do you mean you love Dak? You, I love watching. Uh, you're my, I love you're watching, my least favorite with this kind of stuff. I love watching young players. For all the assholes in the NFL, there are certain. Let me let me say two words for you. Deshaun fucking Watson. You watch that kid play football. He's everything that's right about the game. He's the kid and that... And already out. Yeah, and already out. And, and not just that. Like, this is the kid that... I did feel bad about that. And you should because he's the kind of guy that, like, for all the terrible stories you hear, this is a guy that, like, when they shove the mic in his face... The quarterback for the Houston uh, Texans. Texans, thank you. Comes in... Uh, gets the it, like when he's being drafted and they're shoving the mic in his face. They're 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 like, hey, what do you think of everyone getting drafted ahead of you? And they're waiting for him to say something thuggish and stupid. He goes, anyone that fucking he goes, anyone that passes on me, I will make them regret it. Oh my god! And he did. Yeah. He did. He goes. He he doesn't say anything. He doesn't start. Uh, Savage thinks because he's not mobile in the pocket. He takes over the job. Highest scoring offense in football. He takes sure. his first paycheck. Well, you know, he gives it to the workers. At uh, to three cafeteria workers at NRG Stadium that were affected by Hurricane Harvey. You come to find out that when Warwick Dunn, he was, has an amazing PR person. Yeah, he's just, <laughs> I mean, that's an amazing to get that work. So he does all that stuff. And getting back to what I said, and then we'll get back. Dak Prescott's another kid that just never did anything but said, "What do you need me to do?" And he does it. You know, so I'd love to see what he would do under without this shadow. Preaching to the choir over and, here with Black Luke. Right, Black Luke's giving you he's giving you that that squint eye, El- that squint eye nod. Like Ezekiel yeah. Elliott is great. Don't get me wrong, but take him out and watch what Dak does. Like, yeah, all right, watch this. Watch how little I care that you took the best running back in football from me because I have the best offensive line in football. I don't know and if you heard. I don't know if you heard. Uh, Ajayi's pretty good. Did you see that touchdown run? Of course I saw the touchdown did run. You, and did I watched you, it in forward and reverse. And how buddy. about that Dolphins game when they gave up the two-point conversion to fuck the cover with two minutes left? <laughs> <laughs> what a game. What a game. Oh, What a game. Gino's a problem gambler. <laughs> I, uh, no, the Dolphins have the problem. The, <laughs> this is her, Tiffany Thompson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, five fast facts you need to know. What are they? I'd love to know some of these facts. She doesn't listen. One. <laughs> <laughs> Bruises easy. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's a crybaby. Two. I mean, we can go over these all day. Yeah. Who can't take it? Who's clumsy yeah. when it comes to cooking breakfast? Uh, Three. Yeah. A bit of a crower, if you know what I mean. Doesn't really keep things to herself. Uh, 
Uh, do we have to give a fuck about the Cowboys? Do we have to disclaimer after people look at their screen, their little screen in the car, and it says Comedy Central Radio? Once again, I'm Dan big, Soder, everyone. Yeah. From yeah, billions. I'm a big. I'm a big star. I can't even talk. Do we about still you. have to disclaimer that we're that we're kidding? Obviously, uh-huh. no one here is pro domestic abuse. Oh, stop. Um, oh, dude. I mean, the shit rains down. Man. The Larry David thing. That was. Uh, here's the thing that gets me about Larry David's monologue this weekend that everyone was that was bitching about. SNL, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, his concentration camp was... The, the stuff he did before that got no reps, did you see it? The Quasimodo stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was losing my mind over that. He's, yeah. like, he's like, does she have big tits? I'm <laughs> like, that, that was fantastic. Now, do people already get upset about everything? At a, uh, it's, it is, and I'm telling you, it's no matter what, is how the world's just kind of going in that direction, but uh, one, we're one year Trump. Right. Horrible. <laughs> what? I mean, I, I mean, it's just horrible how everyone hates him, and he sucks, and everything's just awful, you know? Lowest rating I heard in the history of polling, like, 20, it's 27 just, presidents or something. It's just so bad how it all goes, but I mean, like, it's... And then people never fucking shut up about it. The goddamn news cycles nonstop, and everyone's now so touchy with everything. And that's why, unfortunately, in the situation with all the people coming forward, it's like, you know... So many people were like, yes, something terrible happened to me, I was attacked. And then, you know, someone else is like, I'm a makeup girl, and he asked me out twice. I mean, that's pretty... I mean, should I be part of the civil suit? Should I jump in? Because my life's been affected negatively in the following ways. I was asked out twice by a guy I'm not interested in. You know what I mean? Right. It's like coming, all those fucking things. So I, I had this weekend in... I was at Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club in quit bragging. Jersey. Yeah, I'm not bragging. I was at was Albrightsville, like, PA. Hey! Oh, they sent me so many shots, I threw up on Kevin Dombrowski's car. Not important. You, you do your story, buddy. Yeah. I had a lady, uh, I had a lady so oblivious in one of my shows to what I was talking about. I was doing a, I was telling a story actually about this radio show, about something we did with, uh, Jason Mraz. We used the word. But anyway, the, the long form point of the joke is, Stop just hearing words and, and, and listen to the context. Don't just, so many people just freak out when they hear a word. And I Without start, te- a doubt. I start telling an example of that using the time someone released and sent us a letter when I used the word, uh, retards, uh, talking about someone with Down syndrome in a joke. <laughs> and I, we did a whole thing that, and, and she gets up and stands in front of the stage oh, with a wagging yeah. finger. Here and she's, go. it's just so funny. She goes, Down syndrome? Is that what's funny, you piece of shit? And blah, and just cursing out. And then just like storms off outside. And I started cackling, laughing. Good. Because, I, I, but it was genuine. Because I was, at first I was kind of like, what the fuck? And then I was started laughing. So I'm like, it's unbelievable. She's doing the thing that I just described. It's the equivalent if I went, hey, Anyone who's a piece of shit more would get upset if I said the word retarded. Yeah. And then, and then someone goes, Hey, did you just fucking say retarded? She goes, Did you hear the context of what I just said? They cue on the word. It's unbelievable. But she was doing it as I was describing that very thing. And that's why the crowd was so baffled. They're like, Aren't you saying? And people, as like, people almost were like, was that a plant that you I had a, a person like get that. up? Do people, cause people do that, cause sometimes you've seen my act, I'll like walk through them like words or weapons, it's how you use them, blah, blah, blah. And then someone will get offended by the very, and they'll be like, that's a plant, right? Like the 99% of the people get it, but the 1% of dumb people that are like, he said retarded and they get mad, and you're, and the people are like, was that a plant? Did you plant them? Because that's the, because they're paying attention. Well, nope, he said retarded, that's a word that I can be offended by and, the thing and is, shut down. You hope to make it funny, but I mean like, a lot What's of com- not funny com- about retards? We've <laughs> seen it. <laughs> but, but I mean, comics. Unless you're gambling on the Special Olympics and they can't win a fucking sock race. All right, go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. What? what? No, nothing. No, I'm, uh, I'm, I was taken back by this. someone that, that just not listening that much. They really do. They, they fucking, they zone in on the goddamn word. But it's so word. funny because people But, but do people that. in much bigger positions of power, like, seem to be doing the same thing. It's like, you can't say this. Oh, you can't. It's just, it's, it's wailing down everybody. People Everybody's can't trouble. wait to be offended. It seems like, and it's the word. Not but again, the again, it it never comes into. There's no gray area anymore. It's all like choose a fucking side, like hardcore. Yeah. And I am on a side, but you can still live in like the gray. Do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. exactly the point. Okay, women shouldn't, or a men shouldn't make women uncomfortable. They shouldn't come on to them hard and put them in bad spots and to feel that way. So the guy goes. Sure, but like, y- you should also be able to ask at a woman, and if she says like, no, you can kind of go, like, oh, why not? Maybe I thought we'd have a good time, and try to plead your case. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And women are gonna, of course, be like, well, we're not saying don't do that. It goes, you're saying don't do that if you're 
ugly. <laughs> you know what I mean? If like if you're a guy who you think well, this girl won't like you, like don't ever take a whip at the world because too much is coming back like that, and then it trivializes the actual bad shit. But that's it, a problem. Like everyone can't be, everyone can't be a victim. No, I mean everybody can't be a. Victim. But everyone tries. But it seems like everyone tries to be. Not everyone, but so many people are like, they. You said it earlier. You, you, it's fun to live in that gray area. You wake up, uh, wake up every day, be like, all right, what happens? Other people are like, no, the second, the se it's like, it's, it's like if you, I the fuck did Trump do today? Oh, it's, <laughs> but it's like, what was the, the Dow Day Ching? It's like if you try and visualize it, it's like, it's like a blind person. You like, you just tap the sides, but you try and stay in the middle. Everyone's like, nope, the second I touch the side, the second I hear a word, shut down, insulted. He said retard. He said colored. Look, these people aren't lazy. That guy's working hard, your producer. You know, but for the most part, <laughs> where's my wallet? For the most part, it's never not funny to me. For you the know, most part, people, like, people enjoy it, but th that one or two percent that just, like, want to make a scene. Oh, I'm upset. I'm upset by the word. And retard. they really believe that everyone should be upset, too. What's funny uh, about that is how sensitive a human being I am, which is interesting, because I said, like, as much also, we do a radio show, we bust balls, and we talk shit about celebrities, whatever, like, I, I get sensitive to it coming back to me, but I know I got to accept some of it to, to some degree, do you know what I mean? But, like, I don't even mean sensitive like that, I mean sensitive to it in a way, like, I went a couple weeks ago, or a week or so ago with friends to see that Jigsaw movie. And we went upstairs. How was that? It was all right. It was fine. They're always yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. We Hard, went upstairs. It was noise. it was Kip's Bay Theater. So it was upstairs and there's a downstairs. Sure. The tickets didn't say which theater it was. So we went upstairs first. There was a black dude, like a chub black dude working the gate up there. And I gave him the, I gave him like our, our paper. You know, I'm like, I'm not sure if the theater's up here. And he goes, no, I'm doing an impression because it's what happened. He's like, no, no, mister. He goes, you made a mistake. You have to go downstairs. The theater you're looking for is downstairs. And he was clearly like of below normal intelligence. You know, he was never like, shit together like that. Slightly, something slightly wrong with him. And I become completely consumed by it. I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I, I get like teary almost. I'm like, cause I feel good for him. And he's out in the world working. Right, right, yeah. And then I feel bad or immediately for everyone around that probably shits on him and makes him feel like, like to him. Like, fucks with them. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's so not my person. But I mean, I don't know if in, this, in the context of a joke, like using the word retard should shut you off. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, like, you know, I've had plenty of, we all have had tragedy in our lives, but I mean, like, if cancer struck down someone you love, should no one say the word cancer? No. But people, people believe that. People oh, buy into please. that big time. You ever sitting in the show and you do a joke about cancer, which is never not funny, kills people. <laughs> and, and the other one was like, oh, my father had cancer. And you just want to be like, you're the one? You're the one person who knows someone who died of cancer? I hope to God you get cancer too, so right. you can be happy. That's, like, how do you not laugh at that? Well, you it's have ridiculous. no choice at any moment. Be like, all right, I'm going to be upset about cancer the rest of my life, or I'm going to find a way to laugh. Nope, I know someone who died of cancer. Yeah, you're the fucking one. That's what I want to say. Like, you know, only one person in the history of the world has died of cancer. I've been looking my entire <laughs> we comedy career for the one person who knew you fucking idiot. <laughs> Stephen Chapman. Yeah, the, you're the There's guy. There's the guy. You're the guy. Oh, and, and your aunt had... Your aunt had uh, breast cancer? Ugh, I saw her tits. Not worth the fucking grief. How but about, I'm the bad guy. How about to tie these things together? How about uh, the NFL not making a big deal about breast cancer this year? No, because of all the shit that went on like a year ago or two, right? Like, like they we're, weren't giving the money or something? Yeah, like they, I don't even know. I just came to find out, like, for all the talk they did. One guy wore a pink shoe. The next week, it was all camouflage, support the troops yeah. shit. <laughs> now, it's, now it's cancer as a whole. So it's, it's, a, it's called a crucial catch. Oh, really? So but I thought it was just cancer, October they did cancer. that. And then but there was some pink. There was some pink. Uh, this, a, this A little pink, but they're more emphasizing real like ev cancer everywhere as opposed to just the rest. Whatever. It is sort of a weird thing also just to like, force the NFL into like breast cancer. It's like, you know, yeah. it's like a weird one that dudes like, if there was like, but if they went, hey, prostate cancer, that would have been a ringer. Like, just prostate, just dude stuff. Like, I they do that. Isn't, that. isn't that just as, the same as going just breast cancer? You know, they I, do, like, I like the idea of all cancer. They do that in MLB. In MLB, on Mother's Day, they wear pink. They wear the unis are all pink for breast cancer, and on Father's Day, it's all like baby blue for uh for you know fucking prostate cancer. For uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's you don't blue. pay attention because the Phillies are so goddamn bad. But yeah, it's true. Yeah. Is, is baby blue prostate cancer? Yeah, yeah. You get baby blue balls, but it's prostate cancer. They do. They is do. that the color? Look for the prostate cancer ribbon, Christine. They do the unis in old powder blue. Check, Google it. You'll but I'm see. saying, I wonder if that's like the, you know, uh, 
everything's got their color. The pink is obviously breast cancer. Right. Is there a color for... Yeah. It's baby blue? Look at that. Oh, it's almost like I know what I'm saying. It's almost <laughs> like... I'm, here's the thing. I saw that ribbon on the back of your car. I didn't know if it was... <laughs> I didn't know what it was about. No, that's a boot on my tire. <laughs> What was the kind of car we drove it a, a while back with the car? Oh, that, that EOS. So I don't miss that. That I, I was driving a. Sh- I thought it was a. I thought it was a, f- a hard top convert. It was a, the the Volkswagen EOS, which is the hard top cabrio, which is just a gay car. <laughs> Not that problem any, with gay cars. You don't have any more. No, no. It just park it in your asshole. Oh, Forgot dude, about it. My life partner took it in the divorce, <laughs> but I. I drive a Chevy Sonic now. That is all about that, you old mother vaga. I like the, uh, oh, look at all these ribbons here. See? See how that works, Joe? Have you been checked for prostate cancer? No, well, by a guy. I don't think he was a doctor. It said doctor on his van, but he was good. <laughs> he was thorough. He was thorough. Jacob, you've had, had one, yeah? I have not. You have not? You just have believe, because you? you're very healthy, you think your prostate's yeah, just good I to go. you're supposed to, you do it after 50. I heard it start at 40 now, they're saying. Really? It started at 40. Oh, yeah? Did but, you do it, Lou? Sure. I mean, at a place, not at like an Asian massage. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> no, but I am open to it. I went to a chiropractor, and they gave you adjustment till completion. No. Uh, <laughs> Should we go as a family? Like, uh, you know, they always say, what's that bet Hollywood story? Is that like Steve Martin and a bunch of guys, Tom Hanks, like all these guys get together the night before, and they do the fast, and they just hang out together and all bullshit. Oh, and then cards. they go get their colon checked? And then the next morning, they all get blasted in the asshole by a doctor. <laughs> Is that the one where you have to be put out? You're unconscious for it. Here's the thing, Doctor Steve, Doctor Steve, who I've talked to, uh, sure. asking about this, says you do not have to be put out. Some people n- like to get put out because, but they go, it's uncomfortable for sure, but it's far from the end of the world. And you know, if you don't have to go under anesthesia, I'm all for that. So I'd probably take it straight up. <laughs> Raw, no chaser. Come on. <laughs> you wouldn't have a couple of drinks? Oh, baby, I like it raw. How much will you give me to sing Baby, I Like It Raw when I go to a prostate doctor? <laughs> Let me just put on some of this. Uh, can, nah. <laughs> nah, uh, Doc. I don't know, dude. I would think that, you know, like you have a couple. Can you have a couple of drinks in you? You can't eat food, right? I don't know. You might be able to have alcohol. Like you go to a bar, you have a couple of whiskey. You, you could boof the alcohol, right? Where you put it up your shitter. Is that what you do? Like you the girls? Boof it? Do you yeah. boof the alcohol? Yeah, take a tampon soaked in uh, no, vodka, put up your that? shitter. What is that? What is that? You ever heard of that? No, oh, you I drink, have never. You drink heard of all old school. Gina. I do. I do. I'm very boring. I just get hit. Oh, yo, Doc. <laughs> Get rid of all that lube. Take off those gloves. Ooh. I want to feel your hand. Hold my hips. Uh. Ooh. Oh, rest in peace, ODB. Um, look at that. That first half hour flew by. Where does the time go, people? I don't know. I guess we drank it all away. Uh, we'll be right back. It's the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Wow. Oh, Lord, you love it, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that juice. Me and, uh, me and Soder have talked about it before on the show, but I really, uh, I love the concept of like listening to lyrics and realizing that this guy had to sit down at some point and seriously write it down. Yeah. He's not laughing at himself singing that, and we don't really laugh at him. You just sort of accept it. Like, he's the rock star. He's got it figured out as far as this goes. Like, he's writing this thing. You do think it's kind of silly. You don't think it's silly in the way, the cringe-worthy nature of how I feel about it. Right. Like, have you ever looked back at a... Uh, did you ever try in your life to write a serious poem? No. Or something like that? No. I mean, we historically have the Lewis J. Gomez poem, which is one of the greatest <laughs> things of all time. If you haven't looked at it, he worst wrote poem that ever. who? Uh, his ex-girlfriend. That's worst right. poem ever, Legion of Skanks on YouTube. If you ever get a yeah, chance... I mean, it is I so it's fun. Amazing. I love it. It's one of the funniest things ever. But just looking back at anything you've tried to write serious, and just be like, what a jag. Because you have to tap into something that comics don't have. Um, it is the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Big J. Okerson, sitting in for Dan Soto, the hilarious Gino Bisconti is hey, joining buddy. us. Sitting here with the crew. Uh, but, I mean, the idea of that, right, you know, 
He doesn't feel corny going. She said, "Yeah, I feel silly doing." No, that. And, and and you sit there like like that's some fun <laughs> shit to do when you listen to like because you never like we take music for granted. Like, oh yeah, you know we're comics and we do the live performance thing, but it's so exactly the same and completely different. And you listen to how people like write these songs. Like, I love Billy Joel. I do him on like the Billy Joel channel, like when it plays on this year's XM, and he explains how he wrote songs. You're like, oh my god, you know, like same sort of Italian restaurant was originally like two different songs uh-huh. and one was just a fuck around song called uh, Things Are Okay in Oyster Bay It Got Me a Hoagie It's like ridiculous and the other one is uh, that I just heard uh, Three Steps by Leonard Skinner who yeah. like I may have learned was a band like three days ago and not a person Honestly, God, <laughs> that's a true story where the guy this way that's a true story no, though no, no the guy was hitting on a chick and her boyfriend came and he was going to kill him. He's like, just give me three steps to the door. And he wrote a song about it. Like, like we, no, can, that's the and they we can't wrap our brain around that creative process. It's because we have to look at, even if you're going like, I'm going to be painfully honest on stage, which I, I like to try to be as much as possible. Sure. Like, like give it as much honesty as possible. Um, maybe too much even sometimes. But at the same time, it's done with all of an air of like, isn't this stupid? Even when you're bearing your soul, it's in like the, how dumb is this to feel? Yeah. Or, or I was, I was, or we're all laughing at how silly I was. I'm talking about a genuine thing. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like sitting there and it goes, okay, sitting in a room. Yeah. Tortured by my own memory. It's like, it's a tortured by my own memories. Like, I could never write that and be like, I'm bringing, I'm bringing this to the world. You're hollowing out your soul. Where'd like, look, uh, and at the end of the joke, uh, your wife's a whore, sir. Okay. But comedy comes at the end of that when you look back at that and you're like, and you laugh at like, and goes, like, it was tortured by my own soul. What the fuck are we talking about? Like, I don't know how we stumbled into, into, Bar- into Barry's I Write the Songs. We're writing <laughs> songs, Gino. Uh, I th- no, no, I'm not critiquing. I'm saying, I, I haven't heard this in ages. Oh, no. Come on. I'm going to start bawling like a bitch when you play Weekend in New England. What am I, gay? Oh, like, what is- Lou Dog's a man. Uh, he's a mana bro. That's what Barry Manilow calls his fans. I thought they were fanalos. I thought they were fanalos. Oh, are they fanalos? You guys are obviously fan-a-los. not fans. They don't. He doesn't call us any of those things. <laughs> you don't know B-Man. <laughs> yeah, my bad. My bad. You just came out gay is my thing <laughs> ever. Oh, you just came out gay. Like, what? Uh, Lou, are you a huge Barry Manilow fan? Uh, no. He doesn't not like, he doesn't not like them. <laughs> I can't explain it. You guys would never understand. Yeah, you wouldn't get it. Okay. How many songs do you know? How many can you name on top of your head? you ghetto, you would understand the let's ghetto. Let's go, let's go back and forth so you can name more I want Barry in on this. I want in on Barry Okay, okay. we got a three-way dance here. Okay. On let's the most go. unlikely. Let's go, you start. I write the songs. Namigo second, uh, Mandy. I'm gonna go weekend in New England. Uh, I feel like Gino's gonna win. Uh, <laughs> uh, step, uh, ba, 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 uh, Copacabana. Shit, that was my next one. Oh, Jesus Christ. Nobody look on your phone. There's a chance for us. Da, da. It's hard to <sighs> fucking I write the songs in, in your head. No, is it? It's hard for me to think of another, but it's your turn. Yeah, you go. Isn't that, is, I'm I got saying, mine. Isn't, that, isn't that there's a chance for us? Watch, watch, that, me, watch me get in your kitchen. I is that a mine. song? There's a chance for us? Am no, I wrong? No. Not the title. You know the song I'm talking about? No, I don't even know. I might, but I'm going to steal it. But that's not the one I'm doing next. <laughs> not the one I'm doing next. I, I think I'm out. Shit, that's in the night. Shit. Is that real? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, Lou's going to cheat. He's going to look at the board. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, got, I write the songs. Uh, my turn? Mm-hmm. I'm out. I'm pretty good at this kind of thing. Manilo never got way into. My friend... My friend Jamie, this girl when I grew up with, uh, a good friend of mine, her mom loved Barry Manilow. That's my extent of Barry Manilow. But no one in my family was ramming that one down my throat. I got some other weird ones for sure. Really? I can tell you a lot of Billy Ocean music. I can name but I can't. Billy Ocean's always the best. Barry Manilow one escapes me. I know there's more. But Give us a list, Christine, of some Barry Manilow hits. Mandy. We got of course, that. Nail, nail. We all got that. I write the songs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Three, we covered three. that one. Can't smile without you. Oh, oh I fucking would not have gotten that. That's a layup. Looks I can't like, laugh and I can't Looks sing. like we made <laughs> it. Oh, my God. Yep. We, not, we suck. I, I was surprised. Yeah. There are no winners in this game. Uh, Come on. These are layups and we didn't get it. No, Gino, you won. And now? Uh, even now. Can't think of it. Even now, when I am oh so far, I wonder. Oh, come on. <laughs> Super fan. Uh, oh, weekend it. in New England. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. Time. Somewhere down the road. So mm. at some point, uh, Gino's gonna have to put on his sequin. <laughs> his sequin. I can't top. get up because I have a razor right now. But go on, go on. Somewhere in the night. Mm-hmm. 
The That's the one you were thinking, I think, Jay, somewhere in the night. Maybe. God, yeah, so much mana, though. I oh, daybreak. I should have got daybreak. Because it's daybreak. I can hardly believe it. Da, ba, ba, ba. Where did you come across Barry Manilow in your life? I'm older than you guys. I, I know, but I'm saying, where did you come across in your uh, life? Just growing up in the late 70s. He was, you know, he was the guy. You just heard him on radio. Yeah, I had one of the first uh, cassette tapes I bought. Manilow's Greatest Hits, I think. You purchased Manilow. I, I made wow, purchase of that's a Barry a big Manilow. Deal. Yeah, that's how I do. That's yeah. a way bigger deal than I was making. <laughs> Hey, I, I don't know why I liked him. I, it was my thing. That I bought 52nd Street, and I had Toto, Asia. That's right. Toto? I had Toto. Asia is not an album by Toto. Oh, Asia was the other. I had Toto, but Asia was another band that I confused with Toto. I'm sorry, but I had Toto's album. And Asia's album? I didn't have Asia's album, but that's what I confused with. I apologize. I don't, you don't have to apologize. But I feel all, terrible. I'm beside myself. We're all right friends now. here. No, I, I we're just, all our friends here. I just feel like I've ruined everything. Uh, speaking go. of our age here uh, and worried about our... Uh, Colons here before we get to this uh, the story Jacob that you and uh, and Black Lou brought up today that I want to get to we have two calls uh, on the same thing Charles in Chicago says we're confused about our I believe butthole procedures am I right Black Lou is that what it's about uh, you're on the bonfire yeah. what's up buddy hey how's it going um, yeah you guys are mixing uh, mixing your metaphors there I think uh you're thinking colonoscopy is what you would be put out for, what you would hang out the night before, because you got to drink the stuff that clears out your Barium. lower GI tract, and they stick a camera up there right. at an insignificant distance, uh, so you may want some medication for that. Prostate exam is just a finger to check and see if your prostate is enlarged. You can get that on a street corner. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know a guy. I got a guy. Street corner man Charles. or anything else. I got a guy. I got, got a guy. A prostate guy. But definitely, Christine, look it up. I believe, Cole Nelson, you don't, a lot of people don't get put out for it. I'm sure it's uncomfortable I've at all. I've never though. heard of anyone getting put out for a uh, for a prostate. I will no, say yeah, that. that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, come on. Prostate's too close. Yeah. You get a girl to find your prostate, you ask her to do it. <laughs> it might have been a girl. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I'm going to sit here and pick nets. I threw 100 bucks at it, told it to get the fuck out of the room. <laughs> I think it was the doctor, but his diploma said ta-da on it. It was weird. Uh, thank you, Charles, for your call. And then uh, we have Renee and Tex I want to talk to, who this sounds like a fucking nightmare. Uh, completely. Renee, are you there? I'm here. How you doing, buddy? You're on the bonfire. Yeah, so I had a colonoscopy procedure done uh, about... Well, I've had three done in total, but during one of them, I actually woke up in the middle of the procedure. So I know you were saying that, you know, it's uncomfortable, so you don't need to be put out and uh, be put to sleep. And you're right, you don't have to. But let me tell you, it's a very <laughs> extreme uncomfortableness. Uh, right before the procedure, I told the doctors, you know, because of my youth, I told me, hey, I got a little bit of a tolerance for uh, drugs. You might want to give me a little extra. I don't want to wake up in the middle of it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the doctor laughed it off and said, oh, ha, ha, whatever. And, you know, <laughs> count back from 10. So I put sleep, 10, 9, 8, I'm out. Renee, now, Renee, I'm having such a chuckle at this, the concept, because you're saying it's so uncomfortable, which I believe you very much. But it just I mean, like, it's waking more up than the- uncomfortable. It's, yeah, it's, but like, I mean, but, I've had. But at least if you could brace for it and having it happen and like some sense of like adjusting to it, like waking up out of an anesthesia sleep and just being like, what's going on? The world's so great. Like, <laughs> Yow! <laughs> the same way it is. You got a fire plug up your ass? <laughs> They also inflate you full of air so they can get a uh, clear look at your intestines. Oh, I heard that. So I heard that's actually the most uncomfortable part is they fill you up with air. That's what I woke up. I woke up because I felt yeah. like I was my stomach was going to explode. My stomach, it looked like I was pregnant when I woke up. My stomach was swollen. The pressure was horrible. I woke up like an angry bear just saying, it hurts, it hurts. <laughs> and the, the nurse had to jump on top of me and the doctor oh, nice. had to say, get him another shot, get him another shot. And they had to give me another shot to put me back under. Were your doctors the but fat boys the from the movie <laughs> Disorderly? <laughs> it's like, it's a comedy of errors here. Everyone's laughing at you when you say you have a tolerance for anesthesia. Sure you do. We'll see you after the heart surgery, dick face. Oh, yeah. Why did the doctor say, watch this before me put me under? That's weird. You know what? You made it, Renee, that I don't want to do anything ever that I have to be put under for. Because if I go, can you make sure you give me enough drugs yeah, to handle yeah. this? How will you know what like, I've got enough there? <laughs> yeah, buddy. You're fine. Stick up. Stick up. <laughs> Oh, if you were going to go Fat Boys, why don't you? Fat, fat, fat boys. Fat boys are back. <laughs> fat, fat, fat boys. Um, Renee, they, they, they put you back asleep, or were you just up for it then? I don't know. They, they jumped on me, and the doctor had to give me another shot to keep me. I was trying to get out of the bed. I was in severe pain. I was angry because, like you said, 
you wake up under low anesthesia, you don't know what's going on, you're in severe pain because you're swollen three times the size you're supposed to. Oh. So they had to give me another shot to knock me out right away before I, you know, damaged myself. And you pull the thing up, pull the camera at yourself, start swinging it around at everybody oh, like a crazy person. God. Ah! <laughs> That's what they were trying to avoid, but it, I mean, it's beyond, uh, uncomfortable. It's, it's, uh. Yeah, it doesn't sound Do you think well, at the end, uh, do you think at the end of the colonoscopy, while you're still asleep, that they all look at each other and say, he who can remove the sword from the stone <laughs> is the truth? <laughs> and they all take turns. Like, I can't. Oh. You are the chosen one. Uh, Renee, thanks for the call, buddy. That's, uh, I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah. Jesus. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, take Enjoy care, man. Enjoy your Obamacare. Uh, a can in California just called. Says he was awake for his whole colonoscopy. Sounds this like he's is, bragging. Everybody else is a bunch of pussies. Sounds like, it sounds a bit like this fella's <laughs> bragging, Ken. Ken, you're getting us all goosed up here because I'm telling you, I'm treating for everyone's colonoscopy, just so you guys know. <laughs> I'm treating so you guys can't say no. And we all have to go awake for the whole thing. I want us to all be there with our pregnant bellies next to I'll each other. It. I'll do it. Uh, yeah. Remember that was like Dr. Huxtable's dream that all the men were pregnant? Yes. Remember that? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> One person remembered, and Gino. It was on the Gino knows anything. Channel. He was 60, He's sixty-two years old. He remembers everything. <laughs> it's on the side um, Ken and Callie. Crackle, 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 dude. Sup, sup. Hey, let me tell you something. The last thing you want to do is be awake for that procedure. They had shot me up with so much stuff that I've had different surgeries in the past, and my body tends to fight it. I've woken up. I've, I've woken up during two two different surgeries. Oh, what was oh the other one? What was the, what was the other kind? Uh, I had a pin. I had uh, ripped my thumb pretty good and had a pin put in my uh, uh, thumb. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, they had put me out, and I had woke up during that twice. Yeesh. And um, but anyway, but the colonoscopy pain is incredible. Really? You did not want to be awake. Yeah, you did not want to be awake. Was the guy rubbing your cheek with his other hand or something? <laughs> At least to <laughs> gently. Was he cooing? <laughs> was, uh, he coo was he cooing in your ear? There, 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 hey, there. Come on, Ken. Hey. Loosen up for me. Give you a little ammonia. Put a little ammonia <laughs> under your nose. <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> yeah, that would have been nicer. during it because they got that camera all the way up your butt. See, but the thing was is you can't move and they had reached the limit of what they could give me. Wait. And I was oh, shit. You couldn't go to, they couldn't put you down. No, no, but I'll tell you what, three hours later, I was, I was gone like hard. But, uh, but during the procedure, it's, it's cause your things prolapse. I mean, you know, like they close oh, up and when they God. shoot that air, oh, it's yeah. the pressure. Yeah, that uh, that kills you. It's what? the air. The air is the thing. So look, I'm looking at the at the camera right now. Right. I'm like, Sh just spit on the tip and shove it up my ass. Oh my I'm God. fine with that. That that camera doesn't bother me at all. But I bet you're right. I bet you're absolutely <laughs> who, who right. Who invented the colonoscopy? This doesn't sound like something you have to have done. <laughs> uh, no, it's pretty good long. thing because uh, had my brother had gotten a colonoscopy earlier, he'd be alive today. Really? Oh, so okay. you very much recommend it? Yeah, no, it's very important I to do for sure. Um, recommend it. Well, absolutely, Ken. Thanks for the call, buddy. All right, take care. Thanks. We have so many uh, crazy calls here. Um, That's we have one. A catheter? I couldn't even fucking imagine being awake for. I'd, I mean, honest to God, I, I, I wouldn't say slit my throat first, but I'd be like and flush punch me in the face sixteen times before you put anything up my pee hole. It doesn't even make sense that you can put something in your pee hole that goes all the way through. That seems like illogical to me, even though I know it's exactly how piss and jizz work. I love that. But I love the fact that you can put something through that hole straight back is crazy. That is a hole in your body. I love that nuts. all these things like he uh, he took it all during the colonoscopy. Somebody recorded it. One guy Manilo wrote a lot of jingles about band aids. Yeah, the callers call about it. We have a lot of subject flips here. Some people call about different things. Hey, guys, wow. when you get that camera out of your ass, just know, man, I'll over a lot of jingles for Literally band jingles for about Band-Aid. Well, how about you? Uh, I, ca I, I came to in the middle of my colonoscopy <laughs> while the doctor was talking about fucking my wife uh, with a with an air gun. Oh, yeah. okay. That's okay. a fun fact from George from Illinois. Says that, uh, he wrote Illinois. A lot of for uh, Illinois. Um, I'd like to talk to Riley in Tennessee. Uh, is this something we could find? Riley, you're saying uh, a man kept his phone recording during his colonoscopy? Yeah. Um, oh, it's I a chick. Hey, chick. read it on the Internet, and uh, he had kept it recording and heard him talking, like making fun of his uh, the size of his dick and <laughs> how they wanted to shoot up his ass. <laughs> 
Uh, now all I want to do is record them getting my colonoscopy. I, mean, I want to get put out now because I want to see if they talk about me. Like, uh, man, this guy's got a deep asshole. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this guy's really accepting this thing inside uh, of him. It's no problem. Uh, let's, let's hope his dick has an allergic reaction to the meds and it swells a little bit. He took bit. the air like a champ. Oh. Riley, where'd you read this? Um, I was on... Uh I think I was on Facebook and somebody had reposted it saying, like, warning people about what they were going to say about you when you went out. But doesn't that almost seem like nature? Isn't that almost nature? Yeah. That you're supposed to just kind of yeah. do that when someone's unconscious, you would just start talking about it? I sort of expect that. They found the recording. Yeah. Look at that. You're cracked staff. Oh, there is the recording here. The following are excerpts from conversations between the medical staff performing his procedure. The man was entered as evidence in a lawsuit. This was, excuse me, entered as evidence in a lawsuit filed by the patient for defamation and medical malpractice. Oh, buckle up, Riley. This is about to, you're about to <laughs> fish your wish right here. The patient says, sorry, I have so many questions. It's my first time doing anything like this. What a bummer. He's being nice. I have a tape that starts like that as well. He keeps mentioning it like it's the first time he's ever talked to anyone about it. I'm like, sir, you see two urologists. Well, what are you telling me for? Oh, so pause it, pause it. So what just happened right there? They start shitting on him right away. He goes, yeah. Uh, in Christine, oh, sorry, what are you doing? Yeah, it says, uh, discussing a separate treatment the patient received for a rationalist penis. I guess he asked the doctor about it. So the doctor's complaining. He goes, you saw the urologist. What are you asking yeah. me questions for? So these are all things you'd expect they would do. But, right. like, it is funny, like, when they're working on you and they're annoyed by you already. Because I wanted to, especially the medical profession, how many times you go in and you can see I'm dealing with a whole bunch of insurance shit right now for a medical thing. And, like, how much... How much I overthink at the doctor's office and do all these things. You know what right, I mean? Just right. because, like, they can, like, just fucking do something or not. You know what I mean? Like, I try to be very, like, apologetic. So if they shit talk me, they, they should feel bad about themselves. Sure. Because I'm always, like, sorry to be a bother. I know I'm calling you again, but I, you know, I'm still waiting to find out about blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this guy, same thing. This guy's asking a question to a doctor. He's like, hey, this thing is freaking me out. Help me. I really sympathize with this guy. This is freaking me out. Help me. And they're like, what are you asking me for? You? Yeah. Look yeah. at your dumb, rashy <laughs> dick, stupid. <laughs> I've never seen a, a rash that big on a dick that small. <laughs> Maybe the anesthesiologist says, problem in that general area of my body, and most men I know, if they have a problem with yeah, that area of their body, it. they're in a doctor's office until they get a good answer. <laughs> 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 Pitching at him? Yeah. For, like, God, if you have a problem on your dick, just yeah. go to the doctor the next day like every other normal person. Yeah. You this guy's idiot. got terrible cock maintenance. And also, oh, by the way, and now the doctor, the gastroenterologist, uh, enterologist, and also... Don't mention it to me because I'm not interested. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, man? That's so shitty. But I also get it. Like, I didn't know they were being recorded. So, like, I get it. Well, you're there to do a colonoscopy. You're like, oh, by the way, can you look at my dick? No. No. <laughs> Why would I do that? But then she's like, and then the anesthesia just goes, and I don't care. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's a pretty cold uh, thing. For a guy who comes in, he goes, Doc, also, I'm very worried about this thing on my dick. He's like, you know, just take your time. No worries. When we come out, we help you out. And as soon as you fall, you're like, you fucking faggot. You think your rashy dick is something I want to see, stupid? It's so funny. 20 minutes after this, the anesthesiologist accused the fucking doctor of raping her or something while people were under Exactly, and then he went on and on about it, and I'm like, oh. one of the nice things about being a specialist is I don't deal with that. <laughs> oh my God. Nice you do a crap being an anesthesiologist. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Ah, One of the nice things about being an anesthesiologist is making people shut the hell up. Yeah, yeah. Wow! That's pretty cold. That's icy. <laughs> that is icy. Uh, before I ever get put under anesthesia from now on, I'm going to be like, fuck you, you fucking bitch. Yeah, right? She's like, excuse me? I'm like, you know. Don't talk about my dick. <sighs> I'd iron her the whole time while I'm going under. She's like, count backwards from t from 10. Like, 10, you fucking whore. Yeah. Nine, stupid bitch. Sorry, ask questions. You're a fucking doctor. Seven. Eight, I will wake up. <laughs> I hope when I'm asleep, I wake up middle of this and kick you in the twat and beat you guys over the head with my ass camera. <laughs> That I'm gonna pull out violently when I wake up like an angry bear who can't be put down. 
<laughs> Riley, you sound adorable. I'm sorry. I'm telling you all these terrible <laughs> ass things about my ass. Oh. I've never had Hello. a camera up my butt yet, um, for the record. And uh, the anesthesiologist on, and really, after five minutes of talking to you in pre-op, I wanted to punch you in the face and man you up a little bit. Damn. Jesus. That's a girl saying it. That's I know. Tiffany Ingham. I hate that because I walk into a doctor so vulnerable. When I, By the time I go to a doctor, I'm like, what? Doctor. well, by the time I go to a doctor, I swear to you, I, I'm already going like, well... I put my house in order, so I guess I'm ready to just check in here until I die. <laughs> well, when's the last time? Like, you I really approach every time I go to the doctor, like, go ahead, like, cancer, clearly. When's the last <laughs> I don't even go and freak that as much as I used to go and much more freaked When's the out. last time you went to the doctor and why? Because I don't go to the doctor. They tell you you're sick. I don't go to them. Very, very When's recently. the last time? What'd you go for? I went to the doctor, I mean, very recently. Uh, that was me. With what? I, I guess... Two, three weeks ago now yeah. for my uh, skin thing I'm trying to get figured out. A skin thing? Sucks. Yeah. Hate it. Um, Riley, thanks for your call. we got to take our second you break. put some eczema on it. Allo. Oh, is that all? Trust well, me. Fucking, I'm sitting here like an idiot trying to get my insurance handled, and Gino's right. Allo. Noxema and allo. That's, That's it. Spoken like an 85-year-old guinea from homeless, fucking... <laughs> homeless person semen. Put all a tea three. bag on it, you fucking fanook. What are you... <laughs> That's exactly uh, it. I swear to God. We're going to take our second break here. Uh, we'll be right back. Gino Bisconti's hanging out. It's hey, the bonfire. Hey. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Another day I got invited to a party, but I stayed oh, home instead. Oh, man. Hey, while well, you guys were in commercial, I was talking so much shit about you at home. <laughs> oh, look at that fat so doing that yeah. fat thing. Let's put things in his butt. Oh, um, delicious. It's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Series XM 95. I'm Big J. Okerson. Dan Soder trekking out west, taking his place today. Uh, we said so we have fun guests all week, but this week, tonight, very excited to have the hilarious Gino Bisconti with hey, us. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Um, wow, there's so much. I, I want to get back. We're going to get back to this. Uh, thing here. I want to get back to. Well, first, let me tell you, of course, that uh, Gino, do you have anything to plug? Ever? You never want to plug any selfless. My life is so seamless. Go to my website and follow the. Uh, I'm on. Uh, I'm on the Compound Media every mm -hmm. Tuesday. Me and Aaron Berg host a show called In Hot Water. Water. We have a, a ton of fun with that. I do my weekly football vid videos. Gino's picks. Yeah, and you know I do. How's Gino's picks doing this year? I mean, as far as picks go, going into tonight, we were two one and one because the fucking Dolphins had to fucking get the two point conversion. We're fifty three percent against the spread, which is barely winning. But, yeah. But watch the videos; they're the funniest. I've been doing them ten. They're years. hilarious they're, for sure. They are, well, I mean, I crack myself, but they are great and they're insightful and they're smart and. uh you know, like, it's an informed decision. But look, you know, it's any given Sunday, baby. But that's it's like, not gospel. But we joke about, and and the thing we joke about with like anyone that sits there is like, oh, I have a I have a system for gambling. There's no system. If you've been to months ago when there was a machine hitting all night consistently, uh, <laughs> a machine gun. <laughs> um, the thing about Vegas is they always win. So there's no system. So I just started ten years ago making these football videos, and whichever team. I would make fun of in the joke. I would pick the. I would make. I'd pick the other team. First year. First year. Seventy three percent against the spread. That's pretty great. That's ridiculously dumb luck. And I was so. Did you bet on every one of those things yourself? No, I didn't bet that year. The second year, I decided to bet. How'd I do the second year, guys? Forty six percent against the spread. Even lower. Thirty nine percent. So I never bet again. But I get. I'm lucky. I get paid for them, and I get the rush of doing of rooting for my picks to be right. It's you know? Look, they said you know you, you put money on something, you, you raise the stakes of something. It's uh, and and it's getting to the point where every Every week, the, the best joke is never wins. Like this past week, the one game I lost was I, I had the Bengals getting the points against the Jaguars. And mm -hmm. I said, look, let me tell you something about Leonard Fournette. Because this is what gets me about football players. Like, And don't get me wrong, your Eagles running back situations. How about Clement yesterday? Amazing. Just amazing. But like, I'm a firm believer, certain running backs, and we're old school, they need the ball every down. You need to give the ball to Barry Sanders every fucking down. You need to give it to Emmett every down. You need to give it to Ezekiel every down. You I can almost hear Riley turning off her radio. <laughs> you need to give it to... <laughs> You're breaking down hard To facts. Melvin Gordon every down. But people are like, no, you got to rotate it in. Uh, Leonard Fournette of the Jaguars, a couple weeks ago against the Steelers, had was clocked the fastest of any ball carrier. Carrying the ball. And you know how they'll draft a, a sprinter out of college to return punts or play cornerback? No. Leonard Fournette was clocked at 22 and a half miles an hour and run 90 yards. And you know what play it was? It wasn't the first. It was his 28th carry of the game with two minutes left in the game. And I said, there's no way you can teach that. I said, well, unless you're teaching these kids to steal the heaviest stuff when they're looting, steal that last. Because then, 
And I said, he may be able to run away with an LG, but he can't outpace the Bengals by a TD. And then that was wrong. Do you know how are you single? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> how? How is it possible? Uh, for my friend Danny Soder, who is not here, uh, I'll still let you know that he's going to be at Cap City in Austin, Texas, Thursday, November 30th through Saturday, December 2nd. Get your tickets for that and all Dan Sos at dansoder.com. And me, oh, me, I'll be, I guess... Looking at Facebook now. Oh, there I am. I'm going to be recording my new crowd work album for Comedy Central Records, The Village Underground, as part of the mini festival. That's this Thursday. Oh. And my new album just came out, Big by J. the way. Uh, November 9th at midnight. Please, everybody, let's get this thing filled up here. I need a crowd for a crowd work album. Uh, I think it's looking pretty good now. Sales are good, but I think there's a few more tickets left. Uh, get your tickets for that at nyccomedyfestival.com. That's NYC. Uh, no, sorry. NYComedyFestival.com. NYComedyFestival. I'm an idiot. You can, you can uh, come, it's going to be a lot of fun. You can say midnight. NYC Omedy Festival. You could say yeah, that. Yeah, NYC Omedy Festival. It's the NYC Omedy let's Festival. Not, let's confuse them as much as possible. <laughs> uh, it's going to be the Village Underground at midnight. I know I know everyone here is coming, right? Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. Yay. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And also, uh, as always, follow us on... Uh, what else do we have? Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. at the bonfire. Snapchat. Do you do the Snapchat, Jay? I don't personally. I don't. I only heard about Snapchat as a way that girls can send you dirty pictures that would go away after a minute. And then I, beyond that, as a social media thing, I never understood. I still don't understand necessarily what it is. You know, I just send them on. Uh, I just send them on Messenger. I don't care if they vanish. Like, look, it is what it is. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah, you know I think that's I mean? the way to play it because I don't know. Because now when people go like, oh, follow me on Snapchat and I'll send you or whatever. And I'm like, I, what? Like a a dick pic? Like, what is it for besides that? Why do you want pictures that vanish immediately? I don't understand that. Um, we had... <laughs> What is this? This is Dan? Yeah, from an hour ago. <laughs> He's trying not to jerk off. Mm-hmm. Hey, campers, I'm at my Nana's trying not to jerk off. But the sweet things you see on this page are making it real tough. Ooh. <laughs> crackle, I bet he's having a... Crackle. Oh, oh I bet, yeah. I bet over the course of the, of the week when he half bones up, because he won't jerk off at his Nana's house. Why? It's hard to do. I can't jerk off at my Aunt August. I can jerk off at any house in any bathroom really? if I have the materials. <laughs> yeah. In a bathroom? Mm-hmm. No, it's see, I, I can't do it. It's, it's got to be. I can do it in a bathroom, but not any bathroom. Oh, a public bathroom, I can't do it. Oh, I did no, no, it no, pu- You can't. I could do it in public. Did you really? Bathroom. That's yeah. hilarious. That's where you draw the line. Yeah, I had to. It was just wrong. It just had to be wrong. <laughs> but I, I, I can't do it. With my aunt, my uncle Frank, my uncle Frank was a plumber. He built that fucking bathroom, Jay. Oh yeah, I could, yeah. Can't I get jerk it off in that. His rough hands. Yeah. Oh, he had huge hands. <laughs> Ripping through that tile with a tile saw. Well, now I'm getting a little erect. Um. <laughs> So hang on. So what? What? And what, what? Me and Lou here decided. White Lou had a good idea for this. I'm going to tell you guys uh, what they say, and then we'll go back to let you hear what they're saying. It's better. It makes more sense. Ah. Trying to hear it versus I'm reading it and telling them. Uh, Tiffany, the anesthesiologist, replies. Would you? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen her. Come on. Uh, but Christine can find her. And really, after five minutes of talking to you in pre-op. I wanted to punch you in the face and man you up a little bit. Now she's speaking like about him. God, who's this guy? I want to punch him in the face. So that's what she says. Go ahead. And that's where we're at about this guy. I wanted to punch you in the face and man you up a little bit. That's kind of hot, though. You know what? Pause it. Pause it. Is it, though? Is it a chick? If a chick goes, I'm going to punch you in the face and man you up a little bit. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, really? Yeah, I like that. Uh, do you really? I, I need that. I'm at that point in my life. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the only way you can finish That's if a right. girl wants uh, to punch the I man. Just want dis- I want her to spit on me and tell me I suck. It's just saying, I'm going to punch you in the face. I, I don't know. Again, it just goes so against, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to punch you in the face. Like, I'm going to punch this chick in the face, show her how to be an adult. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's as, it's as, as shitty as that. Like it's like she's it's so disrespectful to the guy. It's like attacking him on so it's like as masculinity because he's worried about a medical condition. Oh my god, he's worried about his big rash on his dick like some kind of a queer with her fucking hillbilly accent. It's garbage. It's a fucking it's a fucking rube talking to a, a goddamn. Is that uh, the guy? Oh, that's it. Look there you go. There's Tiffany. Is that oh, her? Oh yeah, you would do that, dude. Come on. No way. Oh, come on, Jay. Let he no. who is without sin. No, not going to happen. Oh, wait. is that the, uh, Was she a donkey of the day for Charlemagne? What's donkey of the day? Go up, go up, go up. 
Right there, Donkey of the Day. Is that her? I don't know what that is. No, to the right. With the yellow thing. Yes. There you go. What is Donkey of the Day? A Charlemagne ah. tells... Calls, yeah, it is her. Yeah. She made Donkey of the Day. And by the way, looking at her now, yeah, I would actually. There you go. Now then, apologize. Right. I would what fuck is Donkey her. I, of the Day? Isn't, I, I, isn't that when Charlemagne, like just someone who's like famously fucked up this week? No, I don't know what Donkey of the Day is. I'm telling you. That's what it is. But it's who's like, Charlemagne? Come on now. You're around comedy too much for that, buddy. Am I? Charlemagne, the Breakfast Club. He's on the radio every morning. He's oh, yeah. Notoriously. Uh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. That's how I do, yo. You know, yeah. You're, you're not keeping your finger on the pulse of what's going on with the youth, Gino. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? I heard these black guys can vote now. That's ridiculous. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. The times are changing, dude. Check the internet. <laughs> the interwebs. The what? Charlemagne. The WWWs. Um, Charlemagne's a funny dude. And he, uh, But he did Donkey of the Day with this girl already. So this is like... But, but she was all right looking in that picture. Yeah, Donkey not bad at all. picture. I mean, like, and this fucking goofball Indian doctor is like, you know, he's like, you know, he's just like a goofy, exactly what you think he looks yeah. like. Yeah. And he's talking to her, like, with this thing. He's like, I know, right? Can you believe it? <laughs> he's, I know. This he's guy is such a homo. Her. This guy is such a raging homo. <laughs> Your dick rash. I don't want to see that. I got my own big old, big, thick dick. You know what I'm talking about, Tiffany, right, baby girl? Dick. Oh, baby girl just reminded me, by the way, everyone, it is Sierra Sky's birthday today. Oh, so if you're not blocked, oh, shit. if you're not blocked, give her a ring and tell her whatever she wants, baby girl. From Wait, the bonfire, whatever she blocked? wants, baby girl. Want, we baby are girl. blocked. Why? We're blocked by Sierra Sky. Um, They got over us. We were going to have them on our show, but then they listened back to see how much we made fun of her and her boyfriend. But holy shit, fuck. Oh, you hot. did? Why I mean, you, that's her. Why would you make fun of her? Why'd she block you? Oh, because sometimes it's not just that. She actually talks. Oh. And yeah. then it gets really funny. <laughs> and she thinks it matters. And by the way, speaks. she makes her boyfriend, I, I mean, look like, I mean, her boyfriend makes oh, her look, look oh, at man. that ass. It looks like two basketballs jammed into a friggin' hammock. I yeah. love it. It's oh, really, my gosh. I don't know if that analogy's good. Huh? What do you think? I don't know. I'm going to just pretend that girl's ass just threw you for a loop and you didn't know what to say. Basketball's in a hammock? No, I'm wrong. That sounds more like nuts. All right, you win. But, man, she is... Is that her boyfriend with the neck tattoos? Oh, well, that's not real neck tattoos. What? That's their, co- their Halloween costume. That's their Halloween oh, costume. What'd he go, as a douche? <laughs> yes. Yeah, in his world, he was like, I'll put on some neck tattoos and then I'll be a douche. <laughs> but it's really lit. Weird. It's lit. That's him. Uh, um... Well, so that, happy birthday, that, Sierra. That doesn't look like basketballs in a hammock. Aren't All jokes aside, that. happy birthday, Sierra. We've gotten so many laughs at their expense, and, uh, you know, for the better part, they haven't had anybody curse us out yet, so they're good sports. Uh, and happy birthday, Sierra Sky. Um, let's get back to this Indian guy and this piece of human shit who needs to have the who needs to have this attitude fucked right out of her by this super sexy Indian doctor. <laughs> I know, baby, right? Can you believe this guy come in here with that little dick talking about his rashes? What is going on? Oh, me and you should hang out later and talk about it over a few drinks, yes? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Do you want to come over and pet the wink wink? <laughs> God. Discussing the patient's... He's over, he's over the top. you got to calm down. You're going to die. You're going to have a heart attack at 40. God, I remember 40. I don't know. Pause it. He, uh, the doctor goes, how does he deal with his lawyer? Which I'm not even sure what that's to do with. He doesn't sound that Indian, but when you say... All right, whatever. <laughs> Oh, he's a lawyer, she said. She goes, I don't... She goes, how is he a lawyer? That's what the doctor asked. She goes, I don't know, because lawyers, don't you have to be pretty confrontational and kind of slimy and not worry about a rash growing yeah. on... An inexplicable rash growing on your dick? Uh, Isn't that what lawyers do? They just get, like, whatevs about their dick rashes? Yes! Lawyers are slimy with <laughs> dick rashes! Not like Indian doctors with big, huge dicks! And big dicks. Crazy dicks! Pink and brown like monkey's dick! <laughs> She can't even say confrontational. Isn't that how you win as a lawyer? She says. Oh, oh you cunt! Grow some syphilis on your arm or something. She, she says. Said. Yeah, she goes. Don't. Uh, she goes. Put a gown on though. You don't want to accidentally rub up against it. I guess talking about his dick or his rash dick. She goes. Some syphilis on your arm or something. Like. 
crazy cold about it. I can't wait to hear her replies. That's what's going to be coming. That's going to be awesome. When her and the doctor are like, I don't know, man. I was just puss, you know? I was just trying to close big. That guy was my wingman in essence. I did extra good job at him, at colonoscopy on this guy. I was trying to close big. <laughs> Syphilis on your arm or something. That would be bad. That would be real bad. <laughs> it's probably tuberculosis in the penis, so oh. right. it's probably tuberculosis in the penis. So you'll be all right. Just get a PPD in like a month, and then you'll take some INH and be fine. Now there's some doctor. Jo- he is boning up so hard right now. He goes, huh, you know about PPD? That's that's pretty sexy, you know. But it's mostly the chick talking. Everything. Oh no, Tiffany. he checked out and now just realizes it's like he saw the camera behind him or the the microphone behind her. And he's just looking her into the face like, okay. Uh, and she's like, no, I mean, like, what a gross, weird, slimy pig of a man. Oh, oh my God, he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. PPD in, like, a month. And then you'll take some INH and get fine. By the way, do you hear him little weaselly, weaselly giggling? Oh, 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 you're very funny. You know, uh, women, where I come from, not so funny usually. <laughs> Uh, and now we, now Solomon Shaw, the gastroenterologist, weighs in. As long as it's not Ebola, you're okay. That's, it, that's his one-liner. Huh? Huh? Finish strong. Yeah. You know the only cure for Ebola? My jisms. <laughs> that's true. Penis Ebola. <laughs> it's penis Ebola. Discussing who will speak to the patient after the procedure. Bro, I hope it's neither of you. Yeah. By the way, I hope he records that when they're like, hey, everything went great. Your dick is awesome. I wouldn't worry about that rash, honestly. You seem like a really good lawyer. Uh, the, the, so, the, Solomon, the doc, yeah. doc says, so you're going to talk to the patient afterwards, right? <laughs> she replies. Sure. Sure. She's out. Have I mean, and by the way, everyone now is not even laughing at him anymore. But like, she felt that she got the comp. She's gotten him to laugh because she's a pretty girl, and now she just keeps throwing. Because he's like, "All right, when he when he comes up, just tell him this, that, yeah. and the other thing." And she's like, "You're gonna have to have a timer go off, or have like a fake page or something, like oh, to get away from this get guy." Out of the room, yeah. Like, oh, gotta go. Yeah, and he's like, he's going. He goes, he goes. Okay, who's going to give the recap to the patient afterwards? She goes, nobody wants to be around that fucking weird dick asshole. Am I right, everybody? I mean, am I right? Come on now, you know what's going on. Hey, how about it for the ladies though out there, huh? <laughs> A lot of pretty ladies out there. It's pretty nice. Uh, how about it for me? Uh, just trying to do the right thing here. Trying to stay out of jail. It's hard for a brother out here living on the streets. So I'm just trying to do a little comedy here. Uh. I have like a fake page. Dr. Shar, you need it urgently in the office. Okay, I have to go now. Actually, they're working on a plan of how yeah. he can get out of here and this not their, talk to this guy about his dick. This is their exit strategy. Because they're all, by the way, it seems like they're planning that he's going to come out of his anesthesia and go, just get all weird and go, like, mm. and he goes, hey, guys, anything more on that dick rash? Yeah. I know I'm here for a colonoscopy, but anything? You think you guys got any more info about my dick rash? Did you guys happen to discuss it while I was out? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? She admits now she's done the fake page before, you know, paging the, the beepers yeah. and stuff. She Calling Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Bitch is harsh. I was putting his IV in. He's like, I always pass out when I look at the IV. Oh, she's about to. <laughs> so this is the third girl, by the way. This isn't this yeah. isn't the the anesthesiologist. Yeah. It's a medical assistant who's now coming in and piling in too. Yeah. Because now it's another chick. So she's in the room now, going like, Is this pretty girl getting all the laughs? Like, move over, bitch. <laughs> this is my part. Anyone can do this. Fat medical assistant. Come on, girl. Turn on the charms. I was putting in his IV, and he's like, I always pass out when I look at the IV. She's getting ready to call him a faggot. Wait till you see the HIV, bitch. I feel like this is getting so, like, it's going nowhere good. I feel like we haven't heard the worst yet. Well, why are you looking then, retard? Retard! Oh, yeah! Boom goes the dynamite! Special needs dick rash. Woo! Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Retard. <laughs>
I fucked up. I got too excited. It's yeah, okay. it happens. It was very, very exciting. They want to believe what they want to believe. These yeah. people are into their medical problems. These people are into their medical problems. They need to have medical problems. They need to have medical problems. Problems. Just fact. That's you. That's you going to the doctor for a rash. I don't have a rash. Put some baking soda and apple cider vinegar on I call a faggot. It, I call it Northern Virginia Syndrome. No, it's that? like there's people who are hypochondriacs for sure. I know, but I mean like... And by the way, I get being frustrated by the questions. It's just like, hey, dummy... Like, let's maybe this maybe this happens for drinks afterwards, not over the fucking body of the person you're yeah. shitting on. Look at his rashy dick, butt cheeks. I'm gonna cornhole this queef. <laughs> I guess this, but is I guess if you're a doctor, this is when you like unwind, like just hanging out and killing time while you're doing a basic oh, procedure. Yeah, he's got. Right, a fucking, I don't know. That's probably right. He's got a fucking ashtray on his butt cheeks yeah. while he's fucking Look, cornholing him with the what's, camera. What's the guy doing? He's giving him a fucking colonoscopy. He's like, all right, I've seen an asshole thirty times. Like, let's hit on this fucking hot. Angry fucking medical assistant or whatever. Yeah, she's dragging the worst out of him, and she is. Yeah, she keeps firing though. Yeah. she's great. She's like a third base coach. By the go, way, go, go, go. In a second, uh, maybe we can come back from the break. Uh, Brad, uh, I want to talk to Brad. Check here, out the big. It. Brad says that his wife works in a surgery center, and that they'll give you drugs to erase your memory. That can't I want to hear that story, but first, let's finish up with. Salon, Solomon Shaw, <laughs> gastroenterologist. It does, I agree. It seems to be a heck of a lot worse here because it was not like this in Texas. Oh, she's a Texas bitch. Oh, that yeah. says everything. Texas garbage. That's right, Lou. <laughs> Texas Tejas trash. She's she does she's not fandom. She wasn't hot enough of a blue eyed blonde to stay ah. in Texas, so they had to fucking fire her ass up to goddamn a little, Virginia. A little all my exes live in Texas. Is that oh, what we're doing? Oh yeah. That's why I live in Tennessee, motherfucker. That's why I hang my hat. All my exes live in Texas. Woo! Yeah! Great song. Tex, you know where I, you know where I heard the song for the first time? Where? Prison. No. Moon Tower. It was in a film <laughs> called the Last Little Whorehouse in Texas. In a diner scene. Diner. <laughs> With the characters speaking to each other, the characters were... Pulp Fiction. Nope. Fuck me. The, I don't, you're going to get it, Delu. The characters were all worked backwards from importance to this. Kelly Lynch. Sam Elliott. Reservoir got fucked. No. Patrick Swayze. Ghost. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Oh, this is uh, right. Roadhouse. to have a good time. How do you remember that line and not the all my I, I, I remember all the dumb ones. Left boot. You're, we're just here to have a good time. You're too stupid to have a good time. And he breaks his fucking... Oh, I love that movie. Um, let's finish. Before we go to break, let's finish this. Uh, this can't see the time on it. I think about a minute. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, about a minute. One more minute of just disrespectful doctor. Solomon says, here, it's holier than now. Too much internet use, a little too much information. Now, I can't argue with that. TMI? Little, uh, I don't, I don't. WebMD shit. I'd never go on WebMD. Uh, she says, this is Tiffany again. Uh, he was all fixated, like, I'm going to be out of here at 1.30, right? Fixated? Oh, man. You got a road crew Aren't up his ass. I mean, it's literally, it's like questions like, the guy asked for a pound, wants me to slice him a pound of turkey. He said, like, medium thin. I mean, like, what a piece of shit. It's like, he's paying for a thing he's asking you to do. Like, what is, do you know what I mean? Is that what you equate this with? Um, Getting I, turkey at a deli? Yeah. It's like a, <laughs> Another thing you need to delve into. Oh, I can't, I can't get it. My mind won't let me go there with my butthole. I gotta keep it all sandwich analogy. <laughs> Fixated, like, am I gonna be out of here at 1.30, right? Okay. What happens at 1.30? I just told him, like, it'll take as long as it takes. Yeah. Uh, it'll take as long as it takes. I'm like, by the way, pause. She goes, I'm like, what's at 1.30? Like, a fucking thing he has to do, you whole. <laughs> I, I need your fingers out of my asshole by 1.30. <laughs> yeah. Just that. That's what's all. What's at 1.30? I mean, what's at 1.30, you asshole? What do you have, pick up your children from daycare or something? <laughs> what do you have, a babysitter, you piece of shit? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, a million and one possibilities? We're not done. I told him I'd give blood at 1.30. <laughs> oh, what a fag. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you blow me now and get it over with? Oh, what? So here comes Solomon swinging dick. There we go. He fucking, he rinsed. He goes, well, the reason he's not going to get out is he, his own fault. He doesn't sound like this at all. Why is it his own fault? <laughs> Stop talking to me about dick rashes. Have up your butt already, right? The zebra was my mother. Am I the right? The zebra was my mother. Anyone? Life of pie? Anyone? No? Two? <laughs> all right, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
don't even know. Uh, well, the reason well, he's exactly, not here is uh, Well, exactly. I'm not going to be shy about saying <laughs> what. I'm not shy about saying. Your crap was awful. Your crap was awful. Oh, he had a shit-filled colon. Oh, that's really funny. That is called the reveal in the business, Jay. That's it. That's you, you wait till the last 30 seconds. He had a colon filled with shit. Now, I do have a little more... Uh, Maybe that's what he had at 1 o'clock. I was going to take a shit at 1 o'clock. <laughs> I, was, I need to be out by 1 o'clock. A shit. It's my, it's my routine. Um, I now, though, have a little more sympathy. I have a little more sympathy I now. That, I don't know that I do. For these two, as they're having this conversation, they're scraping shit out of a man. Uh, uh, Oh my God! On, I smelt your shit for twenty-two years. Now you can't smell mine for five minutes. <laughs> right? What is that from Friday? Friday? Oh, I haven't seen that in ages. We're not going to be out of here by one thirty because of your own negligence. Yeah, because he probably wasn't supposed to eat the day before, right? And he probably had a meal, and he was filled with shit. Yeah. And she goes, "He's a lawyer. He'll understand that word." Yeah. Wow. This chick is just I'm awful. Go. Pause. <laughs> Discussing which nurse will have to speak with the patient after the procedure. Um, <laughs> Tiffany again says, round and round we go. Wheel of annoying patients we go. Where it'll land, nobody knows. This said, by the way, uh, I my mom works in a... I her one time, and they seem very you know, unconcerned also. It didn't seem as callous as this, but at one point they were blaring a, a, a thing. They were like, code gray, code gray, everyone on deck, code gray. And I'm like, what's code gray? Like, we're sitting here just saying hi to her and her work friends sitting in their office. Code, What's code gray? Uh, a patient's just gone missing in the hospital. <laughs> what? I go, what is that? She goes, yeah, I mean, we're all supposed to go, like, block all the doorways to make sure. She's like, but no one ever does. And they go, they'll, it's just, it don't work. And then five minutes later, he's like, uh, that's the end of the code gray. Code gray is over. And she's like, see? She's like, that's why I go, but what? what? <laughs> this is, this is, there's like, yeah, but told haven't you. there been, like, people on the highway with their eyes? Yeah, told you. <laughs> right, yeah, and there's kind of, they're kind of like, I don't know, man, someone will find them. They pay someone to do that. She's like, but she goes, everyone on, everyone who works at the hospital, like all doctors are supposed to like, just like go check the doorways and see that nothing. <laughs> they couldn't have, they, they, they just didn't, ra- and it's going like, boop, boop, boop. And I'm like, mom, should we eat steak? Oh. Get care of that. <laughs> yeah. It's great. She was like, oh, this guy came in with a dick rash, some crap filled lawyer. <laughs> uh, always bitching about his dick rash. <laughs> Where to land? Nobody knows. Charlene, she got lunch with me. I feel bad. I shouldn't be so mean. I feel bad. I shouldn't be so mean. Oh, I hate that. I'm such a bitch. Marking hemorrhoids. I'm going to mark hemorrhoids even though we don't see them and probably won't. Wait, oh, he's going to act like he has hemorrhoids. That's like mismarking a chart? That's fucking crazy. Even though we don't see them, I probably won't. I'm just going to take a shot in the dark. Take a shot in the dark. Is that what they call the colonoscopy? That's what the kids do it. Yeah, that's it. A... Hey, guys. Oh, my God. Look at that. Did you see that? I didn't know that happened. The patient got how much? 500000 Half 000? a million dollars. Nice. Oh, you can talk shit about me and my crappy butt. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. I awarded the patient 500000 Now, how do you get... Good. Explain this to me. Uh-huh. How do you... How are you... How is that... How do you get half a million dollars for that? Because they don't want to deal with a, they don't want to deal with a, uh, oh, it was a jury though, actually. So it was actually a trial. I guess. I don't it know. It was all on the chick. It didn't come to the guy at all. Cause the girl, what, what trouble did the lady get in herself? Cause it looked like she was actually herself. Like it wasn't Donkey the Day to fucking Solomon Shaw and, and her. It was just like her. And she really looks ugly in court. Well, that's a bad picture. But still, like you they, don't want to look hot in court. I know their do doctors you? And, they, and nurses. They sat. They they just sounded like the way waitresses would talk to bartenders in the kitchen. You know, it didn't of sound course. that bad. They didn't make fun of his cock. But or how anything. are you? How are you scarred from being under sedation, right. getting a colonoscopy, having people talking about? You're right. Me? It's absolutely. It's like, absolutely. Oh. It's absolutely recording a conversation that you know the things we say on commercial break here. Could get that. People would be like, yeah. "Oh, I thought you liked that person." Like, no, no, we do. Uh, we do we're just like talking around. We're just talking. You know, it's like well, we're just talking shit. We're being, being guys. We're being guys. Yeah. So I, for sure, there's it sucks. nothing for recording somebody without them knowing that they're being. Recorded. I wonder. Yeah, they really like. Look again, Fairfax County. We'll see where that is. Is that we talking? We talking about a bunch Virginia, of Virginia right? rubes? Virginia. Is that what we're talking about? A bunch of Virginia rubes? Is that? It, it's a Virginia sounding city. Yeah. Oh, we lost our phone call from uh, 
The guy that says they give you all the that gives you the red pill and you forget. Yeah, the, the erasing memory pill. I want to hear about that when we uh, come back. Uh, let's take our last break, Jacob. Will that will that make? Where's that the make time happy, go? Jacob? I want Jake. I want Jake. Not just Jacob, but Jake. <laughs> just I want Eugene and Gino to be happy. <laughs> That's me. Uh, and I want uh, Lewis, Lou Witzke. Yeah. And Lou Black Lou. Jo- <laughs> Lewis Lewis Black Lou Johnson. Christine Bartholomew Evans uh, to have a great time. Uh, we'll come back. Hopefully, we'll get that call back. If not, we got plenty to talk about. Yeah. We, we, we've been inside this guy's ass for the better part of 45 minutes. And it's been invigorating. Going. Relax, Black Lou. I said vigorating. Okay. Be, we're good? We good? I'll explain to you, by the way, when we come back, when we go to commercial, why, Jacob, you saw him light up and start sitting up and puffing his chest out. Okay. Because he saw Deb through the window. Ooh, you I don't saw even know. that. You don't I even... don't. You're going to tell me? Is this a teaser? Professional golf lady. Really? Oh, yeah. She's nice. Up and down game? You know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you mean. I don't. And by the way, (laughs) your eyes are talking to me, and my answer to you, I'll say verbally, is yes, you should put your dick against the window. Pressed ham. Excuse me one moment. Uh, We'll be right back. It's the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Okay, big deal. Dan's not here. I'm still going to send that. Uh, we always miss Dan Soder. This is his home. Love Dan Soder. Uh, he is out west Dan. taking care of Nana, which you got to love. That's Dan Soder Cranking right there. one out in Nana's Bay Area just home. Just holding back jizz. Just uh, blue balling out just while he's trying that, to hang out with Nana. Fucking Jimmy Garoppolo trade, cranking it out all over friggin', uh the roster on no, Sunday. Oh. Not smoking pot. Oh. Uh, not jerking off. It's a real testament I, I to what he does this week. I mean, I can get... If I'm at Ann August, I'm drinking like a fucking fish. I just, yeah? Yeah. You can't jerk off. Can't. Can't. in the bed. Nah. There's pictures of my, like, mom and... I can't. can't. I have to weirdly look at a picture of Christine's mom when we fuck the finish. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, is there... It's the Bonfire Comedy Center Radio Series XM 95. That... Sweet laughing voice is Gino Bisconti hey, joining me, Jay Okerson, Thanks uh, for in having studio. Me, Thanks of course, for having man. me, buddy. Um, we only got like 15 minutes left here, Christine, but do you have anything to follow up on what happened to these people? Like like the girl? Like Does she have any response to this? Like, sorry, that was pretty shitty. I hate about it. As much as I understand almost what happened there and like they were, that was never supposed to be found out, I'm not sure if I understand why you got half a million dollars. I don't get um, that. So it's like... I don't know what her things, you know, I'm curious what her like follow up is where she was like, ah, yeah, I fucked up. Cause she does do that thing that I hate though. It's a very girl thing that I don't like, which I'm sure is a million guy things girls don't like. But they're like, oh god, I gotta be such a bitch, right? I gotta be such a yeah. bitch right when it's like, yeah, fix it. <laughs> like, when a girl says that, it goes, oh no, I'm, I can be like a total bitch. It's like, well, if you can even acknowledge that, you should always be 30 seconds away from stopping it from happening. But, but the other thing is, and, and, and I'm, like that's what amazes me that he got half a million dollars. He's like, look, we're ju- it, but it's what they were doing, what that doctor and that anesthesiologist were doing were the, the equivalent of what we're doing now at our job. Like this is how we work. We pass the time, and you got to kill the time bullshit. And, like this, they're fucking doing a colonoscopy, cleaning out a shit-filled colon because they got to, and they're you got to talk your people. And look at the end that's of the day, that's all they're doing. Jo- they're the busting day, chomps. Your job is your job, as much. Everybody knows here. As much as fun, we sit here and have, talk shit and have fun for two hours in the talk show. Talk shit. That's but, what they were doing. <laughs> hey. But there's still that thing when you're getting like, no matter what, it's like, you know, whenever you're getting ready and like, all right, I gotta start making the trek. To you know, you're always like, it's a thing I have to do as a responsibility. It's fun. Sure. And, uh, I would. I've, I've gone to jobs, you know, doing way, way, way shittier jobs. You know, to like. But you still get that feeling where you're like, ah, oh, it's my responsibility. It's something I have to do. So I get like, after a while, they don't have this thing where it's like the nobility of we're doctors. They're like, oh, we just pulled shit out of this guy. Yeah. Fucking, ugh. And I get their kind of shit talking them. Filming, recording them is pretty funny. More than getting money, the more I've thought about it over the break there was more like, almost like confront them with that. You know what I mean? Like, hey, what the fuck? Really? You know what I mean? Like, really? Like, this is what you do? Like, on a moral level, like, getting money for it, like, wh- why? Like, it's only publicly known because he made it publicly yeah. known. You know what I mean? Like, the guy who recorded it. Look how bad these people are. It's like, yeah, I mean, dime a dozen, probably. They're killing time cleaning out a fucking colon. Yeah, cleaning out an and, ass. And they're like, oh, I recorded you. Well, we were bad mouthing. We were fucking just being dudes. Just like, arbitrarily was kind of going, like, fuck these doctors. Oh. They're pieces of shit. And it was much more funny to do that. But as you're saying, when you said it, Gino, actually, was the thing. I was like, yeah, I guess, like, 
I don't know. Like, I probably would do the exact same thing. You're just thing. fucking bullshitting with your buddies? I'd probably do the almost... If I knew he was out and unconscious for real, or I had a full belief that someone was unconscious, and uh, I would talk freely and be like, look at yeah. these guys. I mean, like, I... We're, we're comics. I've we, done that right behind people as they're just facing away from me. We're comics. We sit around in between spots doing that in front of the people we're making fun of. It's what we do. Black Lou? Uh, I used to work with this. Uh-huh. I think one of the main things that she did wrong, though, was saying that he had hemorrhoids and he didn't. Once well, you mark something false on a yeah, hospital then, document, you fucked up. Yeah, then she made an action. That's like a legal thing. True. I wonder if that's what the trouble was. What was he awarded the money for? Was it for that? Was it a false diagnosis? Because that that makes more sense to me with malpractice suits. But shit. even with like the medical malpractice, once your bedside manner goes bad, once you once and, and this is really bad, you can yeah. really be sued for bad bedside manner. And this is basically what, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, You're ba she's basically getting sued for talking shit. Eat your Salisbury steak, pussy. Like, yeah. I'll see you in court. Yeah. Um, hey man, good for him. You got five hundred. Fine, you know what I mean. Yeah, I good for him. Again, man. I don't carry the weight. I don't Punitive think damages. That, that chick doesn't strike me as she's an awesome person the rest of the time. So it's like fuck her. You would though. And then you know the goofy, the goofy Indian doctor, whatever. Who cares? I'm sure he's fine. Maybe not. she's forty two. Tiffany Tiffany Ingham. How long ago was this? By the way, it was a while ago, right? Yeah. 2015. Jesus Christ, where does the time go? They never have her speaking at all, huh? No, and the last thing is it says that it's unknown if there was any disciplinary action. At the doctor's thing? Mm -hmm. I mean, the doctor's the guy that was sitting there talking shit with her. <laughs> Don't worry, baby. You always have place here with me. <laughs> Don't got, worry. Solomon's got you, baby girl. They got shit-faced afterwards. What? Pick up whatever you want, baby girl. It's lit. <laughs> it's lit. Grab whatever you want, baby girl. Is that the red? Oh, you dick. <laughs> oh, Is this you the red? Dick. <laughs> dick. <laughs> Oh, you dick! That's, <laughs> that's the boyfriend again talking. Ah, got it, got it, got of it. Of the uh, of the very lovely. And she doesn't talk to us anymore. The birthday girl. She never talked to us. Jacob got a hold of them. Jacob would have melted if she came in here, huh? <coughs> She's fucking smoking hot. We all would have been pretty taken back by that. Well, I, I I still don't see how you got in her crosshairs and pissed her off. We talked about it a lot. But what was it? What did she do that, that got grabbed your attention? She decided to not just be pretty in pictures and start talking talking to people. <laughs> I mean, there's not really much more to say to it than that. I think you understand that, too. I understood immediately. Like, the pause when she started Everybody talking. wants to hear what me and my boyfriend think about stuff. Uh, and by the way, she's not totally wrong. People uh, listen. What do their videos have on YouTube? Christine, mostly to bring mostly. to bring uh, young Eugene here up to speed. Hey, that's the name, Genos. That was such a fun thing to find out. Eugene, you never knew that. You always assumed, or I mean, you, you know, my name's Jason, but it, no. most people probably assume that. No, you just J. Like I'm Gino. Like of course it, you're just because you look. Hey, look at me. I'm I'm Gino. There's no question. You oh know. Oh my god! If you were J Eugene, that would be fucking. And, and Olga, my aunt Olga calls me Eugene. It's hilarious. Oh my god! They've kept going, huh? Oh my lord. Jacob. Yeah. How many of these have you batched to? Give me a yes, 72, yes, no, no. Yes. Views. Yeah. Seventy two thousand views. Seventy two thousand views. Yeah. When it's just Sierra, she gets a lot more. Yeah, when I it's bet that's Roman true. and Sierra, then it drops dramatically. Clip. I I I don't have an enemy to go to Sex Island. But we were uh we Sex were this Island? close. We were this close to getting them in studio, apparently, right? They we were, were like, in New York. And the video is up there, by the way, for their New York uh, getaway. Are they in a and bouncy castle there? They were going to come by, but then they heard the show. I mean, we did an hour and a half on them. Yeah. <laughs> we did uncork pretty good. The what's in my mouth challenge? Yeah. Oh, my aunt fooled me with that. Nothing. It was her dick. <laughs> hey -o. Uh no, I, Jeremiah New Mexico says he can tell us the drug that makes you forget things. No, I know there's a... I, Peyote, I, I, right? I know, I know, I know that exists. What is it? Ask him. Uh, Jeremiah. Yeah. In New Mexico. What's up, buddy? You're on the bonfire. There's a New Mexico? Not much. Yeah, there's a New Mexico. It's next to the old one. Oh. Thank you. Ha! Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I was a procedure nurse for three years. I did colonoscopies. Uh, the drug that forgets is called Versed or Midazolam. You give it to them, 
they get and uh, after that they're not allowed to sign paperwork or anything after that because they, they forget what they for, did yeah what did they like how far back do they forget there Jeremiah like they don't remember coming in or the procedure I don't, I don't that's freaking me out there boo <laughs> it, it varies from time to time uh, some people forget they even had the procedure about 30 minutes after waking up they're like when do we go back? And they're always like, <laughs> like time to go vote for Obama. Uh, <laughs> like, well, I, no, 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 no. I, I believe it's called Cosby fan. <laughs> Nothing. A little twinkle yeah. in the uh, in the drinkle. <laughs> Take the pill. Um, do you look those up, Christine? The names of those? The forget the forgetful medicines. Get Spanish caravan by the doors ready. Oh. <laughs> well done. Get a little looped. I feel like Lou. Have you taken to listen to this song since Bird Story? Uh, no, but I used to when I, in my younger days. This is all I would do. This particular music. The Doors was was my band. Oh, I yeah? can see that. Yeah. And what kind of drug? Uh, I took peyote. I took Jeez, acid. You I took, took peyote. Mescalin. Yeah. How was that? It was not great. I, I feel like you enough. forgot things because you said that earlier as an example of a drug that makes you forget. I said that already? Yeah. Uh, Benzodiazepine? I guess it worked. What did it make you forget? The, uh, the time that you had. like You just have pockets of missing information, like a couple hours were gone. I had that Saturday night. <laughs> that was just plain that old whisk. A good old-fashioned JMO and lots of it. Drug-induced amnesia is amnesia caused by drugs. Thank you. Thanks, Wiki. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. Why don't we let people just write this? Wikipedia. Uh, amnesia is desirable during surgery, so the general anesthetic amnesia for the operation. Yeah, you don't remember that. I guess that's true. Uh, benzodiazepine PAMS. Am I saying that right, Jeremiah? Yeah. Benzodiazepine. Pines. Uh, Benzodiazepines. It's a group of anxiolytics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same effect of uh, alcohol if you drink a lot of it. I, um, I so do. Alcohol, so so, so in, in anesthesia, though, we mean more blackout. Like if you tell uh, someone yesterday, you don't remember punching the, the cab driver in the face and slamming the door open? Yeah. Like it's more like, remember, forget, you don't come out and you kind of go like, geometry? What do you mean? Is that an arithmetic? I've never heard of that. No, nah, it's... Uh, there's constant sedation where we put you in kind of like a twilight sleep, and then there's full on anesthesia. That's when they give you propofol or Jackson drugs, milk of amnesia. Right. And once that hits your IVs, you're out. That's one of the best sleep you'll ever get in your life. How? I'm going to open up a whole. Thanks for. I'm going to open up a whole new can of worms here. That's just going to. We're going to wish we had another hour to talk. Yeah. Uh, right here. Because as I'm sitting here being judgmental, I myself. And just watching, actually, yesterday, I watched a little bit of Bad Boys 2 is on the Will Smith, Martin, Martin Lawrence vehicle. Of course. Love it. it Part 2. My, my, as quality a sequel as the original. Actually, absolutely true. Yeah. Bad Boys 2 is as good as Bad Boys 1. Yeah. Um, in that movie, there's a morgue scene. They go, and there's the whole thing with a naked chick in the morgue with big, crazy titties. It's a joke. Oh, it's so good. Uh, now, under anesthesia, you're a nurse, a male nurse. You already feel pretty embarrassed about that. Uh, you're at work, and these things happen on anesthesia, and they put a girl under, and her her puss is hanging out. Do you take extra peeks? I without even having to think. Without even having to think, I say I just know I would. Absolutely, I would. If it's but I'm the guy also. If my grandmother bends over and her pussy comes, like, her dress rides up and I see her pussy, I still look because I'm just kind of like, oh, that's fucking crazy. It's gross. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not looking at it because I'm into it. That's that would but be a lie to even you say that. Can't not. But look. I can't not look. Yeah, I understand that. But if it's a good looking pussy in the morgue body, you're gonna look no matter what. But you're gonna look longer if it's a good look. If if it catches your fancy. I if still. I, I think if it was an, an, a, a monstrosity sitting in a well, on, you'd look on, once on and be like, table. oh, yeah. For a second, because you just can't believe it. Yeah, okay. you're just not supposed to be seeing it, and you're getting a chance to see it. You're like, oh wow, it's crazy. So it's agreed we're going to look, but there's different ways of looking. If it's, we're going to like, ah, oh, or oh my. I think God. what we agree on is the fact that none of us should become a dentist or a doctor. <laughs> I think we are not good people for this job. I don't think there's any risk of that happening. I think this whole story just came that we all fall in line, right in line with this Tiffany bitch. <laughs> we're ready for people to fall asleep so we can talk about their rash dicks yeah. and put cameras up their shitty buttholes, <laughs> uncleaned. Um. 
I gotta get some of this stuff. Christina, see if you can order that on Amazon. Some of this benzodiazepine. <laughs> well, you nailed it. Oh, uh, I want Christina. I want Christina to forget a lot. <laughs> can you imagine if I can start hitting her because she won't ever remember? Oh, <laughs> she wants to forget. She wants to hit herself. What? They say there's a spot you can hit right here on the side of the head that'll make them forget the last five minutes, but for the life of me, I can't. God knows I've been trying yeah. to find I feel like the spot I'm hitting makes them really remember even better. Wow! <laughs> you just hit me! Let me try another spot. Wow! Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, one more. Robert no annoy woke up during a colonoscopy. I what about hear, Ryan? We're going to close it out. We're going to close it out here with Robert. Okay. Robert, you there, buddy? Yeah, buddy. Hey, crackle, crackle, first time caller. Crackle, crackle, man. Hey, buddy. How's it going, guys? So, Ooh. yeah, I, was, uh, I, had, I had, had a colonoscopy, and uh, <laughs> they gave me the medication. I woke up on the table, and I just felt them pushing me, so my whole body was moving. I'm a bigger guy. I'm like 300 pounds. Yeah. Nice. It was, uh, it was it was pretty uh it was pretty embarrassing. Were they talking shit about you when they were moving you? Yeah. Like, God, it's so hard moving this fat. So uh, hey, what hey, the Robert, <laughs> hey, didn't see your eyes open there, pal. <laughs> I saw one eye <laughs> winking at me. Huh, buddy? <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, look at the bit. look at the fat putt on this little weirdo. Look, Can you believe it? Oh, fat. hey, Robert. <laughs> hey, fat sleepy butt. fate. <laughs> oh, the fat hey, putt on this little weirdo. Hey, sleepy Pete. What's going on, Angel? In the morning? Huh? <laughs> that yeah. sucks. It it does. It did suck. Because then when I did wake up after they got done with it, I kept asking my wife because that medicine really does make you forget. I kept asking my wife. <laughs> What did the doctor say? And she'd tell me what the doctor would say, and then five minutes later I'd say, what did the doctor say? Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> he, goes, he said, you have no colon anymore. <laughs> he said to leave you. What? <laughs> they took it out and sold it on the black market. Colons! Get your colons! Uh, Robert, thanks for the call, buddy. Hey, thanks, guys. Keep me laughing. I love you guys. Oh, uh, thank you, thanks. man. We will try. Um, I really, that makes me terrified to go get one. But we all have to do it together. Uh, I'm not going. No, we will. That we'll is all, not going. We'll, all, we'll get them to put the tables so we're all laying on our bellies holding hands outward. Like this. That is a bummer. Black Lou will take a, a shot in the cheeks for it. I will. No, you don't want to be awake, Lou, huh? Uh, I don't want to hold hands. Oh, that's where you draw That's the, the only line. thing I want to do. I'll hold hands while they fucking probe you guys. Oh, yeah, will you? I'll do it. Will you say sweet things? I will. I'll sing Sarah McLaughlin, Building a Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should have well explored more your love of Sarah McLaughlin. Uh, Gino Bisconti, give everyone all your information where they can find you, my uh, friend. My new album, I just recorded over the summer. Uh, thank you so much. You live in a church where you sleep with voodoo dolls. Gino Bisconti, can't spell it wrong, G-E-N-O-B-I-S-C-O-N-T-E. My new album, Uncle Gino is Amazing, just dropped. Go to my website, same name, buy the album, follow me on Twitter. They buy the album, dude. Gino's fucking hilarious. He makes me laugh. So my, I love him. We I can't, I can't say it enough, dude. I can't Thanks. say enough how much I love Thanks you. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you for being here. Dan Soder, of course, is going to be at Cap City in Austin, Texas, Thursday, November 30th through Saturday, December 2nd. Get tickets for that in all of Dan's shows at dansoder.com. And again, if you're out there listening and you're in the tri-state area, please make it in. Thursday, midnight, uh, New York Comedy Festival. I'll be recording my second of three, uh, three Comedy Central recordings for a crowd work album. Um, we're doing it one take, man. We're going for it. So I'm going to do like an hour of all crowd stuff. Oh, Trump your last apart. album was fam. Friggin te- well, last recording. Oh, thank you, man. That was it's a gonna blast. Be a lot of fun. So that's this Thursday uh, at midnight, you know, whatever, 11.59 uh, Thursday night. Get tickets for that at nycomedyfestival.com. It's nycomedyfestival.com. And uh, Philly, I'll be coming to you in a little bit. So uh, get ready for that. <laughs> He's mouthing every word. Uh, BigJComedy.com for tickets to all my shows. And uh, we'll catch this week with another. What is this guest every day? We'll let him find out when we get on the air. How about that? That's more fun, I think, right? It's going to be I a fun it. week, Gino. I love you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolute blast. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. It's the bonfire.